Hello, welcome back. No doubt when you have previously written for loops you have used a syntax something like this, uh, for example 1 colon 5, to generate a set of numbers within a range so that you could iterate over them in your loop. So what I'm going to show you today is a way to extend that syntax. Uh, suppose you didn't want to step up in units of 1, suppose you wanted to use some other step, so for example 0 0.5. The syntax for that would be something like this, so 1 colon 0 0.5 colon 5. And so what you see now is that MATLAB has generated a vector which started at 1, which was our start point here, goes up to 5, which was our finish point here, in steps of 0 0.5. So there's actually another way that you can achieve a similar thing, uh, a little bit more convenient for some applications, and that's to use this function called linspace. And so what linspace does is take a start point, which I'll say to be 1, an end point, which I might say to be 5, and then the number of points in between that I want. So rather than the size of the step, here we specify the number of points. So I might want only three steps, and that gives me this. Or I might want four steps, and that gives me that. Or five steps gives me that. So you can see how linspace is a little bit more convenient for, uh, for some applications, but it achieves the same thing as that colon notation which I've shown you above. One common application of the linspace function is to evaluate some mathematical expression over a particular range. And so let's have a look at that here. What I'm going to do is run through the development of uh, some code to do that. So the problem statement is this here, that we want to evaluate this function, uh, the exponential, exp negative x, uh, over this range uh, from 0 to 5. And so I've put down some comments here. Basically, this is how I'm going to code up my solution. So the first thing I'll do is generate the range of x values, uh, prepare an array to hold the result, and then I'll iterate through each of those values and calculate the result. So how can we do this first step, generate the range of x values? Well, that's our linspace function. 0 to 5, let's say I want 100 steps in between, for example. Uh, prepare an array to hold the result. I'll just call it result, and I'll initialize that to an empty array to begin with. Um, iterate through each x value and calculate the result. So here we want to do a loop, and we know in advance how many items we're going to need. There's 100 of them. So a for loop would be a good choice here. Now what I'm going to do to make this uh, a little bit more general, I could write uh, for index equals 1 to 100, but then if I change the number 100 up here, I have to remember to change it down here as well. So what I'm going to do is this. This is uh, the number of elements. This function stands for numL, so the number of elements in the X array. And then I'm going to just calculate the result. like this. And so if we run this code and we have a look at what's in result, we can see that we have evaluated, there are a hundred of them, results of evaluating this function. So let's come back over here to our code. MATLAB's put a little warning here. And so what this means is that the array result here is growing each time I go through this loop. So what I'm doing is, first of all, it's uh, an empty array, and then the first time we'll have one thing in it, and then the next time we'll have two things, and so on. It turns out that that's a fairly slow operation in MATLAB to resize the array each time. It has to do a lot of internally shuffling things around. So it's uh, much faster, and here's the hint here, consider pre-allocating for speed. So it's faster if we specify the size of the array to begin with and just fill it with something like zeros, for example. So there's a function that we can use here. It's called zeros. Let's have a, have a look at it. So zeros takes uh, an argument or two arguments for the two dimensions of the matrix that it's going to generate. So if we did 3, 1, for example, then we get a 3 by 1. Or if we did 3, 2, then we get a 3 by 2. So in our case, what we want is zeros. And we want it to be zeros of the same size of our uh, X array. So again, I could have put the number 100 hard coded into here, but then if I change the size of the array, I'd have to change this spot as well. And if I forget to do that change, then I will have introduced an error. So I can actually write this to say I want zeros the same size as my X array and run that. 
and we see the same result as before. Now, what I want to show you today is a way that you could have written this code much, much simpler. So let's, let's have a look. We're going to do the same thing again using vectorized code. Let's have a look at what that would look like. So the first thing is we're going to take our range of x values, this one here, and then we can simply do this in one line like that. So don't you think that that's a lot uh, neater way of writing this? So what's happening here is that we're passing in an entire vector of numbers here into this function. So deep inside the exponential function will be a for loop like this. But we can actually specify it here in terms of a whole vector being passed in and then it will calculate this result over every single item inside that vector and give us back a vector. So we can do that all in one go. So this is called vectorization and that's, what, uh, that's one of the main topics that we're going to talk about today. Let's talk a little bit more about some examples of vectorization. So to begin with, I'll create an array going from minus 2 to 2, and I want there to be, say, 8 items in that array, like so. So now let's, let's have a play around and see what the rules are for uh, using vectorized operations. So we can multiply by scalar, so by 2, for example, to get that. We can subtract off a scalar. We can add scalars and we can divide by scalars and so each of those operations work uh, pretty much as you would expect we can do things like add together two vectors like this we can subtract one vector from another but if we want to multiply two vectors together this is where we have to be careful so notice here we actually get an error if we simply did x times x. And the reason for that is the multiply operation in MATLAB is operating according to the rules of matrix manipulation in mathematics. And that says that there are only uh, certain types or certain dimensions of objects which can be multiplied together. And you can't just multiply two vectors. That operation is not defined. So what we have to do if uh, we mean to multiply the first element by the first element and the second by the second and so on, we have to do an element-wise product where we put a dot in front of the multiply operation like this. And we have to do a similar thing for division for exactly the same reason. And the other one that will sometimes catch people out is the power of. So if I tried to do x squared, for example, that will give me an error, but x dot squared will work as expected.